presents Pennzoil at the half. Sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Our score at halftime, the Duke Blue Devils with a two-point lead on the Huskies of Connecticut, 39 to 37, and as always, beautiful shots from on high provided by Goodyear. Welcome everyone to Penn's Oil at the half. I'm Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Utah coach Rick Majerus. And I got to tell you, it has been as entertaining a first half as we could ask for and then some. Greg, I feel like I'm at Ryan's Steakhouse. There I have a tough time figuring out what to eat because of the great buffet. Here I can't figure out what to talk about. A lot of good stuff going on. The two things that stand out in my mind, though, the tremendous defense on Elton Brand by UConn and then also the fact that UConn's bench has done a pretty good job at making significant contributions. All right, Coach, we're going to get to a telestrator in just a moment. But first, let's show some highlights from the first half. And we'll begin with L. Amin with the hustle, forcing the Duke turnover and the lead pass to Richard Hamilton, who was just wondrous in the first half. Two points here, and then Ricky Moore, equally wondrous. He has been fabulous. He really carried him in the early part of the first half. Unstoppable, knocking down the three there. This, however, may come back to haunt the Huskies. Three-pointer by Trajan Langdon. At the end of the first half, fouled on the play. It turns into a four-point play, and the Blue Devils lead it by two at halftime. What did you see out there, Coach? Well, Langdon must be made to be dribbled to a shot, and Connecticut is doing a great job of after the score, that's their best fast break. Duke must get back in conversion even more so after a score, and I think the pick and roll could cause problems for him late in the game. Here's the best thing, though, UConn is doing. They're doing a terrific job on the air time of the ball. Let's watch four Connecticut players collapse. There's always at least two, if not three. The ball's being reversed here, fed into Brand. Here we see him traveling on the air time of the ball. All heads are turned. All attention is given to Brand to make sure the ball is kicked kicked out by him. Here he kicks it out to Avery, and Avery does a real good job of reattacking, but credit Connecticut with not being beaten by Eldon Brand in the post. That's their game plan. No post Put paint, no points in the paint by Brand. Okay, who needs to make what adjustment in the second half, Clark? I really think to get Elton off, maybe they try to step him away from the basket so he can play facing the goal and see that double team, make his move quicker, or get it across court with a diagonal pass for an open shot. All right, gentlemen, this reminder for a complete wrap-up of the men's basketball championship with in-depth stats and analysis, log on to cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Coming up, Duke or Connecticut is 20 minutes away from a national championship. Jim Nance and Billy Packer will have the second half of action for you when we continue live from Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. Elton Brand just five points on two of four shooting in the first half. Is there a big time for the big man in store in the second half? Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Trajan Langdon's 12 leads Duke. Ricky Moore with 13 tops for the Huskies. Pepsi One presents the Virtual Playbook. Jim, great adjustments that we're going to see here by K Connecticut. When they see the overplays by Duke, they've been going back to court, back door beautifully. Here we see Ricky Moore take advantage of the overplay. Good passing lane. He cuts back door, pass right on the mark. And then Moore does an incredible job beating Battier, one of the best defensive players in the country, comes across, loses the handle, and still puts it in for two of his 13 points in the half. Let's take a look at the points. Get ready, Maggetti. He really has been. Six points, three for seven. We're going to see more of him in the second half. Rip cords. What more could you ask of Hamilton? 11 points, five for 13. He's doing everything that could, you could expect. Three-point shooting from Duke, five for 10, but I don't think that they've gotten off enough threes. They're there. Brand X, five points. Jake Voskel, only one foul. I'd have to say the key to the first half, a great job by Connecticut in their deployment defensively. Here's Voskel doing exactly what he has to do, move Brand off the positions that he likes to be in the low post, and then double any time that ball is on the way in. First possession, second half, belongs to UConn. Again, 9-0 when trailing at the half this year. Down two as they begin the second stanza. And El Amin played less than 10 minutes in that first half. Moore saves it to Bosco. You feel like El Amin could break out in this half. And he hits the opening jumper to tie it at 39. That's the second time he's recognized that Brand gets on him 
and instead of trying to take it to Grant, he pulls away, gets space, puts up his jumper. Didn't play much in that first half because of two fouls. Second one came with nine minutes to go in the half, and then he set. Here's Langdon, and Langdon is warming up. The extra pass by Duke University set that up. That's what they've got to do, get open from the outside by passing quickly after the ball goes inside. Well, I mean, not this time, but he gets it back. And again. One more time and a foul first. Let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie. Well, Jim, that Langdon three was exactly what Jim Calhoun was talking to his UConn team about in the locker room. He said he can't, his team cannot give up the three. He wants to see them get back quicker on defense. But basically, he told them to just keep on keeping on, Jim. They allowed Duke to make five out of ten threes in that first half. That's the second foul on Carrollwell. Hamilton to Bosco, and he puts it up and in. Good job by Hamilton to recognize that somebody was going to pick him up in the baseline. Made the easy dish. Bosco's first points of the night. We have our ninth tie of the championship game. Langdon, he is so hot right now. Jim, Jim, every jumper he's made, he's made without a dribble. He's staring down the defender and then going right over the top of him. Right over El Amin that time, and we might see more shifting over here before too long. We had the angle, Bill. You could tell the minute it left his hand, it was going in. Hamilton dancing that line. Moore will come back out with it. Good judgment by Ricky Moore. The shot wasn't there that he wanted. Hamilton, heavy traffic, has to go back out. Already traveled. Well, I mean, traveled. Connecticut that time got away from their spacing that they've been so good at the first half. They had to readjust. Ricky Moore probably should have dribbled that ball back out at the top, Jim, and reset the offense. Well, I mean, has turned it over four times on the night. It's more, Jim, switched over on Trajan Lang than that. They've seen enough of his outside shooting. Brandon for the easiest two of the night for the player of the year. Good judgment by Bosco. He would have only committed a foul had he gone over and chopped down. And Duke up five. Into Freeman. Freeman for two. Freeman was recruited by Duke. He was saying yesterday he would have gone there, but then he got word that they took Nate James over him instead. Freeman, who played his last year of high school ball with Tim Thomas in the Patterson Catholic in New Jersey. There's a foul on El Amin. And that's the third one, Billy. Jim, that was incredibly unlucky and a great smart play by Trajan Langdon. El Amin had his hand out. Trajan Langdon actually put his forehead into El Amin's hand, and that's what created the foul. An unusual foul. You're going to see something right here you don't see often. Trajan Langdon seeing the hand out in front. Now watch this. He'll put his forehead right into the hand, and that creates the foul. It wasn't the hand that went to the head. It was the head that went to the hand. Lucky was taking his temperature, and believe me, Langdon is red hot. Langdon has scored 12 of Duke's last 14. And here's where Hamilton is so dangerous. He's got the dribble alive. Good job by Carrollwell. Stuck over to Moore. A break. He'll work on his Augusta pal here. Jumper over him. Not this time. Carrollwell clears. Boy, how often did he see? Carroll and Freeman come in and slash the rebound. Carroll to the Battier, the assist to Chris Carroll. What happened right there, everybody in Connecticut's team anticipated that pass was going to go to Brand. So on the anticipation, they go for the double on Brand. Battier moves without the ball. First time I've seen any hesitancy by Connecticut so far tonight. A dunk by Battier, a dunk by Brand, and the Duke baskets coming much easier than they did in the first half. Mooring guns it in for two. Yeah, one thing you can say about this bench for Connecticut, they have gotten good distribution of points by a lot of guys tonight. It's tough to go ahead and establish a pattern with your Duke. Parallel jump. Gets out into the arms of Battier, and he bangs bodies with Mooring. He'll head to the line. Battier needed to finish that play, mooring a smaller player, and didn't take it hard enough to the hoop. And here we see everybody getting ready for the pass, going in one direction, on over to Brand. Battier gets it. 
the first foul on Mooring. Battier will shoot two. We have a cut on Freeman. This is almost always the case. You get a cut, the guy has to go over to get it fixed to come out of the ball game. I think that's the case. Here comes the trainer. That's what it is. Oh, they'll pause the play for a moment. You mentioned a moment ago, Freeman played with Tim Thomas, who ended up playing only one year at Villanova. He was the player everyone in America wanted. He ends up playing on only one year, and look who is the guy that's really made major contributions in college basketball. Talk about how you recruit a player today. This kid's been a part of more than 80 wins at Connecticut. And you know, probably that one-year stay at Villanova stopped Steve Lapis from having a solid program. He's readjusted very nicely, however, since then. You have to rethink the way you recruit. Absolutely. Kevin Freeman, a political science major who hopes to one day go into politics. Yeah, yeah, this is interesting. Freeman had the blood on his jersey, but it's Battier is the one that's bleeding. So during this entire process, they actually were administering the wrong man. Now Battier's going to have to go down there and be administered. Here's Shane Battier, so impressive when dealing uh, with the press conferences and all that goes with it. Jimmy worked for Morgan Stanley yeah. in New York City at Wall Street. Before his freshman year. And let me tell you something. If this young man didn't even play basketball, he would be heavily recruited as a student athlete. I mean, he is a very impressive young man. He said he grew up a Michigan fan, loved the Fab Five, Battier, grew up in Birmingham, Michigan, hated Duke, didn't like Grant Hill, Christian Laker, Coach K, but when they called to recruit him, he said, I realized that's the way ball should be played. It's thrilled to be a Duke. Tuesday on JAG, a crippled aircraft carrier leaves a flight of planes with no place to land. Who is trying to take out the U.S. Navy? An explosive all-new JAG Tuesday on CBS. Uh, Jim, you talk about Kevin Freeman. We've seen him game in, game out throughout his career. Could you imagine he was not voted first, second, or let's try it, not even third team all Big East. But he ends up winning most valuable player of the Big East tournament. I think that that probably frosted him just a little. Would you say that? Oh, man. He can play on anybody's team. And so can this guy, McGetty. We found anybody else out here bleeding? The officials seem to be confused themselves as to who can or cannot come in now. Jim Calhoun, I mentioned it earlier, Billy, he was hired in May of 86, which, which just one month after Coach K had made an appearance at the Final Four for the first time. And back in those days, all UConn was trying to do was stay out of the 8-9 game in the Big East Tournament. Jim O'Brien, who was in this Final Four, was hired within weeks of that event also. You know, I remember Jim made a great statement. He said, I started recruiting, and I told kids, hey, guess who you can play against That's if right. you come to Connecticut? Right. Now he says, hey, here's who you can play with. So a complete change in philosophy. The idea, Jimmy Calhoun said, of back then of even thinking about going to the Final Four was like, okay, when's the elephant going to jump over the moon? Absolutely. And Jim O'Brien, as you mentioned, a five years an assistant coach at Connecticut. And when we talked to him the other day, very honestly, he said, hey, when I was an assistant in Connecticut, you could never envision that Connecticut could be in a position they are now as a basketball team. Terrific jobs uh, this season by Jim O'Brien directing Ohio State here and Tom Izzo and the Big Ten champion, Michigan State Spartans. Duke leads it, second half. We're back in St. Pete, Jim Nance with Billy Packer and the semifinal games on Saturday, the lowest scoring Saturday since back in 1985. Jim, an area that Connecticut has been very proficient is solid play off the bench was scoring. Of course, Ricky Moore with a great first half. But Connecticut against Gonzaga, 0 for 9 from 3. Against Ohio State, 1 for 6 for 3. Tonight, 1 for 4. It's tough to match a team that's a good three-point shooting team if you don't get some from out there. Only one out of four from three tonight. Now it's McGetty going up against Hamilton. Warren, here's a three. Just when you call for it, Freeman battles for the rebound. Strong for Battier. How about that? One arm with the rebound, one with the push-off. Jim Calhoun compared him to another former Final Four player, Richard Scott of Kansas, doing more than you expect out of a 6'6 player. The clear out for McGetty. Doesn't take advantage of it. He's too far away from the basket. With a little more experience, he'd know what to do there. Avery way outside. Push. That's going against Duke. 
He's going to call the push from across court. Uh, going to be on Maggette. Fourth offensive rebound of the night by Freeman. How about that? He grabs it with one hand, holding him off with the other. This is some rebounding effort right here by Freeman. Elton Brand on the floor. Duke by two. There's the flare. You can hear people hollering. Watch the flare. Brand has Hamilton for a moment. And he draws the foul. Again, McGetty, his second. And they say in the act of shooting. What we're seeing, Jim, is some players recognizing very well who's guarding them. And, and I think that that really is a, a sign of a player that's got his head into the game. Hamilton that time realizing with McGetty, a player not anywhere near as experienced defensively, and he just took him. McGetty on the other end of the floor, not recognizing the side was cleared out, should have been closer to the basket and could have taken Hamilton to the basket. The difference between a freshman and a junior. Hamilton's first point of the second half, the first team All-America. Biggie's co-player of the year with Tim James of Miami, but that's two years he's been the player of the year in the Big East. The only other players to win it multiple years, Chris Mullen and Patrick Ewing. How about the first year that he won it? He wasn't even preseason all-conference. Ended up being player of the year in the conference. Ties the game at 49. Our 10th tie. And Duke has not solved the problem as how do you get Elton Brand the ball where he can be a scoring force. Juan just pushing him out of his, the area he wants to score from. Inside the Brand and oh, had the chippy but was fouled. He'll shoot two. And you can see Connecticut saying we can use between Saunders and Juan, we can use 10 fouls and keep Bosco fresh. Elton Brand from Peekskill, New York, a sophomore, his sophomore year in high school at Peekskill High School, playing for the Red De Devils, now playing for the Blue Devils. He won a state championship, and in the quarterfinals, his Peekskill team beat a guy we also caught up with in this tournament named Wally Zerbiak. And his mother is here, Daisy. She was an outstanding player, athlete, at North Terrytown High School. Jim, not too far from where he lives, and you know who was the greatest coach ever at North Terridown High School? That by the name of Tony Packer, my father. Wow. How about that? Later, a coach at Lehigh University. He did. There's a double team on one. Why? Why? How about that? Delivers. You know, that young man deserves a lot of credit. He worked so hard in practice this week, had good practices, but just didn't get anything to drop for him on Saturday. Today, he's put up two outstanding shots inside, and they were there. Rebound tipped around back out to Avery. Wow, Batty And Hamilton. Nice block out by Hamilton. And he wants to run and shoot. There it is. And the lead. Great job by Hamilton pushing the ball down the floor. Duke is really out of sync offensively half court because they have not been able to get the ball to Brand consistently. The seventh lead change of the championship. And Juan is pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing, and keeping Brand off the blocks down low. Langdon drives in the tie back. Trajan Langdon, the fifth-year senior, came to Duke without a scholarship because he was a baseball pro. The man who, along with Wojo, Wojciechowski, that finished his career a year ago, Coach K credits for being the bridge, the bridge for back in the early 90s from the championship teams to now back to the elite status and hamilton is now back to his scoring ways he's got 16 including five in the last minute he's sensing jim that nobody out there can guard him and that's saying something because carroll was a great defender over the back on one but that's all right jim calhoun can he can live with that well, really, you're right, you can just see Hamilton the last couple times down the floor. There's no doubt he's going to shoot it. No, he's saying, you know, you have nobody out here that can stop me. And Juan sits down, Bosco comes back in. Bosco had committed to foul every five minutes of play so far in the NCAA tournament. You can see how wisely Jim Calhoun's using him tonight. Only one tonight, one foul. Almost stolen by Armin Avery, left open. Well, you don't give him that many good looks. And the loose ball into the arms of Oscar. And here's the numbers again. Saunders is open. 
On the wing, Mooring will drive in. And bangs it home and a block on Avery. A chance for a three-point play. Excellent push-up by Connecticut. Duke is not used to teams taking it to them on transition. And you can see Hamilton, a very good move on his part. I thought he was going to try the lob to Saunders. Instead, he decided to go over to Mooring. And, Jim, this young man is an explosive offensive player. Only that knee injury has handicapped him down the stretch in ball games. 6'3", sophomore from Preston, Maryland, Albert Mooring. And Calhoun told me he considers him the best shooter on the team. And when you got the likes of Elamine and Hamilton, that's saying a lot. Unable to finish the three-point chance. But UConn leads by four. Eyeing its largest lead of the night. Now it's Bosco trying to push Grant off the block. And get him a step or two away from where he'd like to be. Langdon, what a pass. Grant unable to slam it home, but he'll go back to the line. They're just not giving him any opportunity to get an easy basket. Now what Trajan Langdon and give him a lot of credit here. He realizes how Grand's being defended. So now he's going to penetrate and try to get the ball inside after some switches come over there. And there is the cheap foul, but it prevents Grand from getting the easy put down, puts him on the line where he's nowhere near as proficient. Look at the eyes of Langdon. Coach Gay said this week, the best way, and this is his eighth final four as a coach. Mike said the best way to see this final four festival is through the eyes of a player better perspective more exciting when you look at it this way and he said in st pete i'm going to look at this final four through the eyes of trajan Langdon. you know it's interesting mike shishevsky struggled at duke university was hired the same year jimmy valvano was by the time 83 rolled along and valvano had won a national championship Krzyzewski's coming off two losing seasons. People are saying, why in the world did they hire this guy? But you know the man, Tom Butters, had the guts to hire him and stay with him. And now he's got the guy that everybody would love to have as coach. One of the classiest administrators you'll ever want to know. Or gentlemen for that point. Connecticut again, taking the ball right at Duke. Duke showing some signs of frustration. Well, I mean, quickly drawing that foul at the other end. And kind of a gutsy move for Elamine to go inside there with three fouls. It was Khalid who early in the year was trying to describe his team. He'll shoot two fouls here. Only four points thus far tonight, but that can change in a hurry. He was trying to say that his Huskies have tremendous spurtability. And that left uh, Coach Calhoun kind of uh, confused. He thought and, I was talking to Clark Kellogg. And, and Khalid said, I got that from Mr. Kellogg. And there we have Connecticut now, four of nine from the line. Remember the great NCAA tournament he had last year? He had 93 points in four games. able to hit either free throw so it's still a two-point game and as Duke had problems from the line against Michigan State now it's uh, Connecticut having trouble there Langdon got it back though and a reach in uh, tie-up situation it's Duke ball Trajan Langdon doing a very wise thing here recognizing what's going on hey they change it around one referee overruled it said Langdon had possession and was tied up that what they said it was the defensive play who forced it. That's a rule change this year. It'll be UConn's ball when we come back. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Championship game is sponsored by Oldsmobile, Nike, Conseco, and by new Pepsi One. the Tampa Bay area, St. Petersburg, and the aerial shots being provided by Goodyear. Are we in store for a shocker tonight? That was the talk all week that Duke was just, again, a foregone conclusion. Coronation coming tonight for the Devils, but UConn and the people who followed UConn all season long knew otherwise. It was a team that lost only twice, once to Syracuse when Hamilton was out with an injury and once to Miami. 33-2, and two, best record in school history. The Devils, 37-1. and one. If they could uh, muster a win here tonight in the championship, it would be the most wins ever in a season by any college basketball team. 
It's something when you don't have your own school record for the reason that they hold the national record, huh? There's some. Bosco. Got it back. And there is Khalid Al Amin. And meanwhile, in stores. Talking about in store for a shop here. Look at the celebration. Back on campus in stores, Connecticut. No double team this time. Brandon. No man in and back to the line for one more. Jim, that was the first time tonight, to my memory, that the ball went inside to Brandon. Connecticut did not Brandon, double from any area. Three. When they did this, this isolated Brand on Bosco, and look at what happens. So Jim Calhoun changing up his defensive strategy. It doesn't work. Duke does a good job recognizing. And notice, first time that Brand has turned to the basket and didn't have a Connecticut man standing right there waiting for him. The second on Bosco, just his second, with 11 minutes, 12 seconds remaining. Elton Brand in the hometown of New York Governor Pataki. Keep skill. And long rebound out to Hamilton. It's ahead, and here comes Freeman. Stuck underneath, pushed out, though, they say, by Elton Brand. Again, Connecticut just pushing the ball up the floor, not giving Duke any time whatsoever to rest. Well, I mean, out with the three fouls. How about the play of Hamilton tonight, Billy? He's been outstanding on the both ends of the floor and really good with his judgments as to what to do with the ball, both taking the shot, there's that little floater of his, but also passing the ball extremely well tonight. Pushes off, really has a silky smooth jump shot. That was the 16th foul. The next one will be a one-on-one -on, -one on both sides. In fact, Freeman. And rebound, Battier. Duke can tie it with a two. Notice Moore has been the guy who's been switched on over. That's long. And Bosco clears. Surprised Avery didn't take that more to the basket. Boring looking for an angle. Gets caught, and it's stolen away by Langdon. Fifth year senior having some nice three pointer. Not this time. Rebound out to Moore. Misjudged by Carowell. And here comes a fresher Connecticut, Jim. And look at Hamilton. Hamilton. Couldn't be set up any better. Yep. Mike Krzyzewski needs a timeout here. His team has hit the wall in terms of stamina. His team is very tired right now. Ten minute mark. Connecticut has used a deeper bench. And it's going the other way. It's on Carrollwell. Hamilton stood his ground. And Duke faces its largest deficit of the tournament. When you get tired, you start doing some things your body won't let you do. And Duke is uh, in that position right now. They need a break. Can you imagine that scene if the Huskies can pull it off? They've got 10 minutes, 10 minutes and change remaining. Well, I hope it's not the scene like they had at East Lansing, where those students certainly got out of control. Well, I mean, back in with three fouls. And he lost control of it. Now they say last touch, Elton Brown. Every call going in the direction, every bounce going in the direction of Connecticut right now. It'll be interesting to see this great Duke team whether they can call on all efforts, mentally and physically, to sustain themselves. McGetty back for the Devils. Hamilton inside the Saunders. Soft hook, tipped up by Bosco, and Duke's underneath. Brand's 11th rebound. Ooh, Avery was thinking about putting up the three. Look at Langdon. There's the push. And it's going to be on Battier. It'll be a one and one at the other end. Three on Battier. Three on Avery. Three on Carroll. in territory it is totally unfamiliar. With. Absolutely, Jim. And as I said again, I think that what we have here is. Coach K looking for a TV timeout to save him so he can have him down the end, but his club is tired right now. You know, basically, Connecticut has gone much deeper with the number of people. Duke has an outstanding bench in terms of the quality, but not the depth and not the production that, Ken that uh, Jim Calhoun has used this, uh, this evening with uh, Connecticut. 
Now Bosco well, sits again. And Amtrick Claver, who has not played that much in his career, scored only 15 points in this his senior season, but he's going to get a few minutes. A one and one at the line for Edmund Saunders. Is this the 11th man that Connecticut has put in the game? It is indeed. There's the answer, Claver. Saunders at the line wearing number 51. He lost his father three years ago during, during his junior year in high school, highly recruited. His father, Robert, was 51 years old. He says he'll wear that number to commemorate his father's courage the rest of his career. Can't get the second one. Now, Jim, you know what Jim Calhoun has on that bench? He has Freeman getting arrested. He has Bosco getting, Bosco getting arrested. And it's going to be Saunders on Brand. Duke should go to Brand now. McGetty hammered. Will it be El Amin or Saunders? This is a big call here. I think it's going to be Saunders. It is Saunders. That'll send McGetty to the line. Four on one for Connecticut. And El Amin with three. Saddled most of this night by the foul trouble. And here for Coach K, one of only a handful of freshmen to ever average double figures in their, again, first year. Johnny Dawkins, Mark Allery, who's here tonight. Dawkins on the bench as an assistant. Grant Hill, who's here. Trajan Langdon and Elton Brand, they're all here. A little nervous apprehension on that Duke bench right now. As you said, Jim, they have not been in these waters before. Not this season. Now the only member of Coach K's 98 recruiting class will shoot one more. First bench points of the second half for Duke. And now they're down four. Michigan State had a big advantage the second half with bench points against Duke as well. Connecticut's bench doubling up the number on Duke for the night. Nine minutes remaining. Open is Hamilton. You can't do that. Jim, great screening inside. Moore set the first screen. Then Hamilton picked up the second screen. There was no way to fight through. Excellent set play. McGetty. El Amin reached and almost made the pass, and now he has it. Wisely pulls Very back. good judgment. Hamilton wants to come in, but it's rejected. They throw it out of there. Brand rejects it. Avery, the Brand on the drive. Oh, oh, Boy, is he running. Holy mackerel. You talk about a big guy being in shape there. Elton Brand was put on the bench for two games for being out of shape at Duke, but I'll tell you, he showed me something there. And he spread it back to wow. the other end, too. Great, great play by the player of the year in the country. 65-61, Connecticut. Look at him now. He steals it again. Got a man ahead, Avery. Saunders reaches in. It will send Brand to the line for a while. Oh, Brand is, Brand is stepping up now like a heavyweight champion. Boy, you talk about a guy that just got all of a sudden re-energized. Look at him take off down the back basketball court. He makes a tough catch on the run and finishes. And as you pointed out, Jim, before we knew it, he was already back down on the other end of the floor defensively. Saunders will come out with his third. Bosco in the game. Graham will shoot a one and one He has 15 points on the night. The college player of the year. Ten of them coming in this half. Already with a double-double. Get a second try. Eight minutes remaining. The game we long for all season in college basketball. And eight minutes left to determine the national champion. Now look for the screens again for Hamilton. They're setting a lot of great curl moves for him. He gets a bigger man. Does he drive to the basket? There he goes. Rejected by Carroll. Out to Freeman. Left hand off the glass. Too strong. And Brand again has it. But Duke can't get down the court quick enough to get off their three. Carroll uh, quickly with a two. Well, oh, you got to love him. I'm really shocked that Mike Krzyzewski's not calling a timeout to give his guys a rest. The next whistle, though, the next whistle will be the uh, official timeout. They are really expending a lot of energy in the last couple of minutes. Well, I mean, blocked by Brown. Back into the arms of El Amin, and he's out of bounds. Not a timeout in time. 
He tried to call it. Mean, almost like a play he made in the first half where he dove and kept the ball alive. And there's the whistle, Billy. Now Duke getting some bounces that they've needed all game. Do they know something that no one else does? Rip Hamilton leads all scores with 22 points. A UConn lead of two with under seven minutes remaining. There's Freeman rested out on the floor. I think that that was a timeout that Duke really needed and should be able to take advantage to get that little blow. Back out there with their starting lineup. They've played a lot more minutes than the starting lineup for Connecticut has. In a tournament that's had a paucity of buzzer beaters, unlike tournaments past. Maybe there's one save for tonight. What's this call? That's more, more trying to fight through the screen. Yep. Gets called for holding like Trajan Langdon. That's the third on Ricky Moore, who had 13 points in the first half, but has not scored in the second half. But those 13 points, Jim, were so valuable because Connecticut was looking for somebody to get on the board Langdon he really uh, took over offensively Langdon at the line one and one think of his career comes to Duke just months after the Grant Hill senior team lost in the finals he said I came to Duke thinking I'd go to four final fours his first year is the year the coach K has to sit out they're 13 and 18 then he has to sit out a year because of a knee injury and now in his last season he gets to play for that championship tonight. This is one of his patented free throws. However, he could have tied the score up. High school teammates going head to head in that matchup. Hamilton partially blocked. Bosco fights for it, and it's good call. Devils have a chance to take the lead. That was great defensive help by Elton Brand because they had to double outside, and Elton stayed right with Richard Hamilton. Langdon, he got a piece of it. How about Mooring with the rebound? He's done that a couple of times already. Moore got a piece of that ball. Ricky Moore challenges Avery. Bad shot. But you notice how Duke has not been able to force Temple. Connecticut doing a good job getting back down. And that's what Duke has been so great this year. In transition, getting the three-point shots off. Over the top of the brand. Bosco, please lock, they say. Oh, my goodness. How about the foul after the shot? No call. Mike Juszewski's got to be going crazy here. And you can't blame him. How is this not a foul? Ball inside, on the ball, but watch what happens afterwards. It takes Brand to the floor. Duke inbounds underneath. A basket for the lead. Battier eyeing it. Good ball to the back on Elton Brand. Great job by Sanders. Third on Elton. Battier had the wide open look. Jim Calhoun said when we came here this week, we came here not just for this team, but for all the players who led this program here. Players like Lyman DeVries and Chris Smith. Now they had chances to get there, didn't quite ever finish it in those regional finals. Hennepil, Daniel Marshall, Travis Knight, just some of the names. Shepard, the lineage of UConn basketball, and certainly Ray Allen. He's here tonight. In that 94 team, 29 and 5, Jim calls that the most talented team he ever had. Don Yell and Donnie Marshall, Kevin Arley, Travis Knight, Ray Allen got beaten overtime by Florida. You remember that one? Pretty touching, though, to hear Pat Hill talk about how they're all here tonight. They all got us here. Well, he considered Chris Smith the most important recruit he ever got because that was the first one he beat head to head against a top KD school. Avery partially blocked. Saunders got a piece of it. Avery can't quite fall the rim. 
And UConn clears as Rushmel Jones underneath who rebounded. Step. Mooring had the right idea. Pretty good defense by Duke. Connecticut is in a stretch at this end of the floor offensively where things aren't going right. They've missed their last six shots. Here they turn it over. But Duke has not been able to convert on the other end as well, Jim. Five minutes remaining. Boy, Ricky Moore is just chasing it. Trajan Langdon everywhere. He can't quite do any screen. Carrawell wants it. Came up so big offensively in the second half against Michigan State. The 13th tie and a timeout. Chris Carrawell has tied it. He said yesterday, when I think of playing for the national championship, I think of one thing, one shining moment. And that was one right there. Game deadlocked at 66. Tuesday on CBS, the network premiere of Species. Imagine meeting the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, only to discover she's not of this earth. That's Species Tuesday on CBS. We talked about that period for Trajan Langdon when he first came to do, and for Mike Krzyzewski, it was such a crossroads in his career, so focused was Mike, so driven his life, he admits, was a runaway train. He had to sit out his last 19 games and then come back to restructure his life and rebuild his program. And Langdon's been there for all of it. Yeah, that particular year had to sit down as of January the 5th, stay completely away from that basketball team that was nine and three at the time. Finished 13 and 18. Five seconds, Alameen recognizes what the official is doing, so he backs it up a little bit. He's close to a five second call. Good job by Alameen to break it. Going four and a half without a field goal. And that's last touch by Avery. But eight seconds is all we have on the shot clock. You know what that means, Jim? Richard Hamilton. If you're Duke, you better keep an eye on him here. Here is where he's so dangerous. Off the return. Bosco back for Saunders. And Farrell, who studied films to get ready to handle Steve Francis and did a fine job against him defensively, has to be aware of where Hamilton is right now. Aware here, too. Five on the shot clock. Yeah, well, I mean, gets in the lead back. He loves the leaner. They really do have two guys that don't mind taking that big shot. Unusual for teams to have that. Major Langdon has the curl that time. Speaking of wanting the shot, Langdon will go back to the line. Double bonus the rest of the way. He'll shoot two. I'm sure the Duke players were aware of Hamilton just as I was. Elamine freezes Avery and then gets that little floater that he loves so well. Just as Grand was an outstanding player on that Goodwill gold medal Wonder. team, so was Elamine. Jim Calhoun says the bravest soldier of them all. Elamine is a brave one also. Two shots, London. Three time first team all ACC in the regional MVP of the Meadowlands. Gets a vote. 22 for Langdon. In the Meadowlands, Jimmy was 15 for 21 from the floor. That'll get you an MVP award. And I talked to him about his trouble in shooting here in three games. He said, I think I shot pretty well last year against Kentucky. We made three out of seven. He said, I'm not worried about it. And he was not playing with any worries at all. There was Hamilton just running all over, trying to rub Carrawell off the screens. He got hit right in the lower gut there and goes down. And again, a double bonus at this end. That's the fourth on Carrawell, Billy. Now, you would think McGetty would be coming in or James coming in for Carrawell because there's still plenty of time here at 350. I think Duke wants Carrawell to be in this ball game at the end. You would expect to see a substitution here. So four for Carrawell. UConn for the game, only six out of 14 from the free throw line. This position, the three-man, always so successful in the Jim Calhoun system, whether it was back in his days at Northeastern with Reggie Lewis, and there have been others, Daniel Marshall, Ray Allen, and this man, Rick Hamilton. The next great one, Billy, is on the bench in street clothes, and his name, folks, Aju Aju Ding. 
but he will, Billy. Based on what you've seen, you said he'll be a star. He really looks like an outstanding prospect to me. He'll be eligible next year. Hamilton's free throw has given Connecticut the lead by two. 24 for Hamilton. It's a tough world. Now there's one exciting car actually designed to take it. The Pontiac Grand Am. With its solid form design, it's the most solid Grand Am. Only 3.50 remaining. It's been a beautiful game to watch. Uh, Billy, you thought Saturday was ugly, and this one's just the opposite. It really it? is, Jim, and, and everything that you would expect. Two number ones play against each other, ACC against Big East. Connecticut knew that they belonged on this floor with Duke University. Unlike those that said it was just a walkthrough for Duke. Connecticut, Jim Calhoun knew it wasn't. Mike Krzyzewski knew that it wasn't. We're going to see right now two outstanding teams, great programs, kids with a lot of moxie. Which ones can bring it home? The court pressure over the top to beat the press to Avery. In the corner, and they forced the turnover. That was more from behind. William Avery, once he crossed half court, had to cut to the middle to get away from that trap. Didn't do it. Avery possession so critical. Three and a half remaining. Hamilton left open after Brand went for the steal. And a three gets him a five-point lead. He rips the long one. Scotty Thurman, Antonio Lang over the top. Charlotte, North Carolina. A huge three there, and that was as well. And that was also against Duke. Farrell comes into the traffic, going to get uh, Bosco for that one. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Field goal percentage in Connecticut over 50%, holding Duke down to 42%. As you point out at the top of the show, Duke has held teams to 36%, the lowest since 1960. But Connecticut doing a fine job offensively. For complete wrap up of the tournament, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Carowell to shoot two. Good arch on the ball there by Carowell. His first final for memory. Duke Louisville final back in 1986. Coach K's first final, Louisville won. Freshman Purvis Ellison, the MVP, or MOP, if you will. One of two. Nobody stepped in for Duke for that long rebound. And this senior leader right here seems to be all over the floor. Again, Hamilton running around the screen. He wants it, not this time. Carrowell pulls it away, waits for his teammates to catch up, and then takes it too far. Just hold on, big call. It's going to the Devils. Same thing that William Avery did. Took the ball down in the corner when he didn't have the numbers. Big break for Duke here. Ripped on out of there. Spin move, too strong, and Ricky Moore rebounds. And who was the man guarding Trajan Langdon on that play? Ricky Moore, and still there in position to grab a rebound. Eight rebounds for Ricky Moore. Matched his total against Ohio State, where he led the club. 6-2 guard. 16 rebounds in two games, and you're asked to be the defensive guard. That's a walk. Well, I mean, and hold on, they got it. They got it. It has to be a walk, kind of a delayed call there. 215 remaining. And, and, and Jim Calhoun looks at El Amin and says, hey, keep the ball out up high. Let Richard Hamilton run around those solid screens. Devils have made only one of their last seven attempts. Bosco pushing down in there on Elton Brand. They can't get the ball down in the low post. There you go. Timeout call. Timeout call. Like you just the only watch a 20. He's got to get the ball down in low to Brand. That's been the key to the game defensively, I think, Jim, is the fact that Connecticut's strategy in the low post has prevented Elton Brand, the National Player of the Year, from having the huge game. Talking to Mike, 
practice the other day, did you ever have doubts that you would get back to this stage? And he said, oh yeah, oh yeah. Back in that crossroads period of his life. But he says, I love coaching more now than I ever did before. That year he set out, it was just too hard to watch the games when he didn't finish the last 19 games of the season. He would just listen to them on the radio. And now there you see the company that Mike Krzyzewski is moving into, and he is now second all-time in NCAA tournament wins past the great John Wooden. And you can be sure that Connecticut's going to play out to stop any three-point opportunities, so the key is get the ball down to Elton Brand. And he's being pushed, held, grabbed, everything they can do to him. Parallel three-pointer. Blocked out by Freeman. Brittany Battier gets it out. Langdon three. The steal is delivered. Sensational play by Battier. What a rebound. A one-point game. With for the first time, right Jim Duke slaps the floor. Remember those days by Bobby Hurley slapping the floor and saying we've got something left. 20-second timeout. Calhoun and Connecticut. Battier. Able to kick the rebound and kick it back out to the Alaskan assassin. Well, people said that he did not play well down the stretch in previous years, but that young man's doing it tonight. There's a full timeout on the floor now. We'll be back to St. Pete. What a night. have two timeouts, but for UConn, one's a 20, one a full. Trajan Langdon is Coach K, who says, the best shooter I've ever had. And did he hit one of the biggest shots of his splendid career just a moment ago? Here it is. The all-time career three-point shooter at Duke. Young man was injured, you know, in the Virginia game in the ACC tournament. The foot problem missed the number of games, missed the remaining two games in the ACC tournament, and then the opening game in the NCAA tournament. So it's great to see him back. Senior on senior right here. More and We're waiting for Hamilton to go off the screen. And here he comes. Farewell beats it. These are the possessions you play back in your mind and back on tape the rest of your life. 1-10 to go. Eight on the shot clock. El Amin with Graham defending. Splits the defender. And that's for the three-point game. How much guts is that to take the ball against Grand inside? with just four seconds on the shot clock. And El Amin, or was it called on Moore? Called on Moore. It'll be, uh, again, two-shot situation the rest of the way. And if you're Jim Calhoun again, you don't want foul here. It stops the clock. Another floater on the inside. He just has so much confidence. Jimmy, just think. Two games ago, he goes 0 for 12. Against Gonzaga. Here he comes tonight. Forgets all about it and comes up big. Two shots for Avery, sophomore. Delivers the first. What a combo he's been with Elton Brand. They made recruiting trips together to Virginia and Kentucky. They decided on those trips they were going to go to the same school, and they chose two. And now they're down one with 54 seconds to go. In any case, Duke will get another possession. At least one. Jim Calhoun says, I want it back out here. And he wants a timeout now. With 34 seconds remaining, they'll operate with 16 seconds on the shot clock when they take the floor again. Now, Jim, here is why it's so important to have more than one option. You know, if you just have a Hamilton as a scorer, that's easier to defend. But El Amin has shown that he can strike as well. So they have two options to go to his primary options. And I think we'll see one of those two deliver this shot or a pass inside if Duke tries to double team on the driving. Can UConn finish it? Again, all week long, all tournament long. Everyone believed it was Duke and only Duke. But these kids always believe. Trajan Langdon in the final seconds of his career. The bridge. And Duke has stood in his way every time he has tried to advance. The bridge, as Coach K called him. Well on the shot clock. Well, 
Amin again, spinning, firing, short. Carrollwell has it. Duke with a basket, can take the lead and win the game. They don't have to take a shot. Will Mike Krzyzewski go for a 20-second, or is he just going to play? We're running this one down. Wow, Trajan Langdon with the ball, and he's going up against a great defender. What's he doing here? Nine seconds to go. The whole season on the line. with and five seconds remaining. The foot movement of Ricky Moore. I'm really surprised that they tried to challenge the number one defender in the NCAA tournament so far. It was the footwork of Ricky Moore who stayed right in front of Trey Langdon. A timeout to 75-74 UConn. It knows two speeds. Stop and go. It just beat a series of the toughest stop-and-go driving tests in the world. It has been electric all night long here at Tropicana Field. 5.4 seconds to go, and the Krzyzewski family trembles. Mickey and daughter Debbie, but it's not over here. UConn ball with five seconds to go. Strategy here is if you're Duke University, you've got the foul. You look on the floor right now, you've got Ricky Moore, an 82% shooter. You've got... Uh, Hamilton, an 83% shooter. Collette is a 78% shooter. Inbound to El Amin, and Avery will send him to the line. It only lost two tenths of a second. And El Amin goes to the line, a 79% free throw shooter. He's come up big in this game. But he's All missed for two tonight. Missed two tonight. There is the defensive intensity of Ricky Moore. I really thought that Duke would have been better off not trying to go against the strength of Connecticut's defense and put the ball in the hands of Avery since Moore was on Trajan Langdon, but that's old news now. Again, you watch the tournament through the eyes of the players, through the eyes of the kids. And Khalid Al-Amin, who had just an atrocious game against Gonzaga in the regional final, they tried to clear that hurdle, still stepped to the line though late in that game and hit the key free throws. Two shots coming for Al-Amin. Timothy makes this shot. Nice shot. Do you foul if you're Connecticut and not let Duke try one of those patented threes to tie this thing? <laughs> You'll make a three to tie. Cajun Langdon's going to take it to Langdon to the floor and try to get it off. He doesn't have a lot of time here. Pressure from Jones. Langdon trips. And you call the start. comes over and says, we shot the world. Folks, you got to believe because just when people say you can't, you can. And UConn has won the national championship in its first attempt in a final. Jim Calhoun has completed the unthinkable for many, the improbable. His friends will tell you that no one ever gave Jim Calhoun anything. His father passed away at the age of 15. His high school coach, Fred Herget, was the most profound influence in his life outside his family, his high school coach. And he said he wanted to be like him one day, wanted to make a difference like he did to me. And he toiled through the high school ranks at first, from Old Lyme High School to Westport High School up in Massachusetts, to Dedham High School, on to Northeastern, to Connecticut.